All right. Good morning, everybody. A little bit cold out here today, but I have my audience in the sunshine again, so that's a good thing. But uh, praise the Lord, we're able to be here with you. We are early. I realize that. It's going to surprise some of you. Some of you may jump on here a little bit late. That's okay. You can rewind it. You can watch it later and rewind it or fast forward what you don't want to hear or or uh, just not even listen at all, however the Lord might lead. But we're, we're glad that our internet audience has joined us. Thank y'all so much. We appreciate y'all. We are so glad that you do. Um, if you look in the description, I don't say this a lot because we're not doing this for money. I promise it doesn't matter. God supplies all of our needs. He does it through believers. Um, that's how churches operate. You know, believers give to the church and the pastors paid by God's people. And we're like missionaries supported by other believers. So I would just say if this ministry is a blessing to you and you would like to contribute, um, you can do so. You can click on that link. It tells you how to give. And uh, some of you say, well, do I have to set up an account? Somebody said you do, but it's not a big deal. This is a very reputable site called Tithely. A lot of churches use it. Online. If you want to give that way, you can uh, message us and we'll give you a mailing address. But that's not what's most important. What's most important is the message that's at hand right now. And so we're going to begin in Genesis chapter one. And we at New Heart Baptist Church, we're going to celebrate sanctity of human life today. Some churches celebrated it last Sunday, the third Sunday of the month. However, this year, the 24th, being closer to the 22nd, um, some churches are celebrating like us today. So I'll be preaching on a very difficult topic this morning on the sanctity of human life. So pray for me and I pray that you'll listen not to me, but to God and his word. So let's begin by reading Genesis chapter one, verse 26. The Bible says, then God said, let us make man and in our, according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. That's pretty clear. We could just stay right there this morning, but I'm going to be jumping around. If you got a Bible, follow with me. If you don't write these passages down and look at them later, but let's pray and ask God to help us. So father, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus through the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would speak, that your word would speak. Um, that we would not listen to the opinions of a man, but that we would listen to the truth of you, God, and your word. And I pray that you would help us to present this clearly. And I pray that you might save some who are listening this morning. I pray that you would change the minds of some who are listening this morning, that, that babies would be saved. God, your will be done. We pray that you will please not let the enemy hinder this message in the name of Jesus. Amen. January 22nd, 2021. One of the last acts of the outgoing President Donald Trump set as National Sanctity of Human Life Day. And he said this, and I quote, Every human life is a gift to the world, whether born or unborn, young or old, healthy or sick. Every person is made in the holy image of God. President Trump. Today, more than 61 million babies have been aborted since 1973, the legalization of abortion and Roe v. Wade and the Roe v. Wade case. Now, this was put out by Desiring God, I think is where I got this, in 2019. 
New York has legalized abortion up to birth, they said, and beyond. It is now legal to neglect, choke, or smother a baby that somehow survived the lethal injection and knife cuts designed to kill it during the it designed to kill the baby during the abortion procedure. To put a fine point on it, Governor Andrew Cuomo signed the Reproductive Health Act on January 22nd, the anniversary of Roe v. Wade. This law legalizes abortion in New York throughout all nine months of pregnancy, even up to dilation. Now today, it's amazing that the words that are used to try to make evil sound good and good sound evil. Yeah, we're living in a day um, with a play on words. And I pray that you would educate yourselves and make sure that you catch that and pray for God to give you discernment because the play on words to make evil sound good and good sound evil. And yeah, we're living in the day where evil is called good and good is called evil. Pro-choice, reproductive health care. These are terms that simply mean abortion. And abortion is simply the willful, intentional act of killing babies in the womb. That's the bottom line of what it is. And we're told today, you know, the famous slogan, my body, my choice. And our answer always to that is, how selfish. What about the baby's body and the baby's choice? You know, someone put up on Facebook a slogan to go along with that when the mask were mandated. Well, I don't want to wear a mask. What about my body, my choice? Well, I don't know. That was a pretty good one, but that wasn't, it just doesn't work. You know, we're living in a sad day, folks. I just want to tell you, before I forget, in case I don't have it in my notes, I can't remember. I remember 15, 20 years ago preaching sermons like this, and you could go online and you could go on Google or search engines, whatever they were back then. I think Google was, yeah. And uh, you could go on search engines 15, 20, 25 years ago for sermons like this. And you could type in things that you wanted to research. And yeah, you, you, you got to use discernment on the Internet, you know, and make sure that you're going to a reliable source that's really giving facts. But uh, you could go do good research and find um, find facts about abortions and other topics. You know, we're living in the day. We're already in the day where we're being silenced. If you don't agree with the evil leadership in this nation and in, in this world today, if you don't believe or agree with their evil ways, then you will be silenced. And it's getting worse. That is truth. That is fact. And do you know I was trying to do some research on the Internet with this sermon and things that I could find 15 years, 20 years ago, you can't find anymore. I, I typed in some things, some facts that were conceived by rape and all of that. And there was a lot of Christians who were. And, and uh, what I get now is there's not enough information um, out there on this search that you typed in. And all you find is what the evil people are saying about these things. It's, it's just terrible where we are today. Well, you know what? We still have this book right here. And it's the word of God. And this is the greatest book of research there is. This is the only source of truth we have. And it's the only source of truth we need. And so I want us to see what the Bible says about life. When it begins. When it's viable. And how we should view it from God's perspective. And I want us to see, first of all, this truth. Every person is created in the image of God. Now, that's what the Bible says very clearly here in Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Let's look at it again. I just read it a while ago. Then God said, let us make man in our image. Now, if you got a good translation of the Bible, the us should be the you should be capitalized you. The hour should be capitalized O. Why? Because that's God speaking. You said, who's the us? Who's the hour that created man? That's God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. That's the triune God. One God revealed in three separate distinct persons, yet equal. Amazing, 
mystery truth of the Bible. But that's God. Let us make man in our image. That's God speaking according to our likeness, the Bible says. And if you go to John chapter 1, verse 3, you'll see that it's the Lord Jesus Christ who created man. If you go look in John chapter 1, verse 3, you'll see that the Bible says Jesus Christ is the creator of all things. Nothing came into being uh, that came that is uh, that exists today. Nothing exists. I, I'm, I'm not reading it right. Go read it. John 1, 3. I know that like the back of my hand. Can't say it right now. Guys, y'all, y'all can pull up some chairs from downstairs or whatever y'all want to do. All right. Sorry. Um, hey, I love that. We're out of chairs. Praise the Lord. We need more chairs for people. Somebody go get us some more chairs right quick, would you? Sorry, just kidding. So the Bible tells us Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, created all things. And that man here is made in the image and likeness of God. Now listen to me. The Bible says very clearly that God, when, when God created all of the world and he created the heavens and the seas and, uh, and the animals and the fish, God created all of that. Y'all can get chairs now, I promise. All right. God created all of that. Then he came to man and he said, let us create man in our image. He did not create animals in his own image and in his own likeness. You do know that, don't you? Yet today it's more, you can get in more trouble and it's more cruel to do damage to a tree or to an animal than to a human. Isn't that sad? Isn't that the sad place of where we live today? Today, sea turtles, their eggs, and their nests are protected under state and federal law. Under state law, destroying a sea turtle nest or egg is a third degree felony punishable by up to $5,000 fine and or five years in prison. Yet the Bible says very clearly here in verse 28 that God blessed man and God said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So God has not only created man in his own image, and only man did God create in his own image, but God did not create animals in his own image, but God said man shall have dominion over the animals. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 through 31, are not two sparrows sold for a cent? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. Yeah, God take care of the animal. But he says of, of, of his followers, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not fear. You are more valuable than many sparrows. That's what Jesus said. Now, let me go ahead and y'all just love me through this. OK, y'all love me and y'all love me. OK, I love y'all. I'm just speaking truth from the Bible. Not only did God create man in his own image, but the Bible makes it very clear. Jump over to chapter two of Genesis, verse 21. God created man and woman for each other. Now, just look. I'm not even going to say it. Whatever preacher says, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. I said it, didn't I? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Adam, <laughs> Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib, which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And I just pause right there. And I never forget my my um, brother in Christ, Mike Lewis, came and preached a revival for me back when I first got into the ministry. And he stood up in the pulpit <laughs> and he said, hello, everybody. I'm glad to meet you. My name is Mike Lewis. And this is exactly what he said, but it was just funny. I'm Mike Lewis from uh, wherever, Georgia. And I brought my rib with me tonight. <laughs> this is my wife. I sitting right here, first read a woman from the rib of man. That was so funny to me. But anyway, the Bible goes on to say, um, verse 22, then the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Look at verse 24. God institutes the marriage and the family right here. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. That is so clear from the word of God. 
my folks now notice i'm not i just want everybody to know the truth of the bible god the bible does not say therefore a man shall leave his father and his father or his mother and his mother does it the bible does not say and be joined a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his husband does it no it doesn't it says that he shall be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh now then he goes on and tells them to be fruitful and to multiply. He said that in chapter one, and he goes on and says that later. Now, how would that be possible in God's design if he created woman for man and told them to come together as one flesh in marriage and to be fruitful and multiply? That couldn't be possible if God designed same-sex marriage. It, it wouldn't be possible. And that's not God's design. That's man's perversion of God's order. Go look in Romans chapter one. That's why God gave the human race over because of that horrible, horrible sin. So what I want us to see, though, is the glory and the uniqueness placed in the creation by God of mankind. Know that God creates life. God creates the marriage and the family. Human life is sacred. Created in the image of God. Human life is formed by God in his image and is therefore worthy of honor and dignity. You say, but a baby's in the womb and it's not a human yet. It's not real yet. It's not out yet. Well, hang on. Let's look at truth number two. Every person is created wonderfully by God. Look in Psalm. I told you we're going to jump around. So you got to jump to Psalm 139 with me. Psalm 139. Y'all knew I was going there. It's a great Psalm. I love this psalm. This is a this just shows three words I learned early in my ministry that I just I told everybody about them. I thought I was something because I learned these words. Huh? God is a uh, um, he is omniscient. He's omnipresent and he's omnipotent. I thought, man, those are three great words. God's om omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. And he's omnipotent. He's all powerful. And that's right here in Psalm 139. I love it. Read the Psalm. You'll see his omniscience in the beginning. He knows everything about me. You'll see his omnipresence. Where can I go from your presence? And then when you get down here in the creation of a baby in Psalm 139, it, it begins in verse 13. And this is what I call God's omnipotence. All, the all power of God in creating man, creating babies in the womb. Now, the Bible says in verse 13, David speaking of how God created him. And he says, for you formed my inward parts. Wow, just stop and think about that. You're sitting here today. You're watching online. Do you know that when you were in your mama's belly, God formed your inward parts? He made every nerve, every blood vessel, every tendon, every fiber, Every cell, your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, your eyes, your fingers, your toes, your toenails, your fingernails. God did that. And then keep reading. You covered me in my mother's womb. I love that. Um, the, another word that can be used there is weave. God weaves us. God weaves every person in their mother's womb. God covers us. And so I would just say right there, if we look at that, you're interfering with the process of God weaving a baby in the mother's womb. If you if you do an abortion, you're you're stopping the life that God is creating, that he's weaving together. And, and then he says in verse 14, I will praise you. I will give thanks to God. Why? For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You see that? So when God weaves together that baby in the womb and when he did you. He, it's a process of God that he did with fear and wonder. He created every one of you with reverence and wonder. In the womb, that's the very beginning of conception. God is forming together a person. Now listen to me. The argument used to be 20, 30 years ago, when does life begin? Well, science proves that life begins at conception. Then the argument became, well, no, when is that life viable? That's a hawk hunting for food. Isn't that amazing? Did we put Louie up? Louie's too big. He's got too fat to be taken by a hawk now, hasn't he? 
<laughs> okay. Kitty cat's too mean for that hawk to get her. Yeah. So, uh, in the womb, God's weaving together. Now, the argument used to be when does life be begin? And science proves it's at conception. Then it's when is life viable? Today, we're just done away with those arguments. I'm just telling you, we're living in a day where just forget it. We're evil. We're going to be evil. And if you don't agree with us in your evil, we will shut you up. We'll get rid of all the research. We'll get rid of all the books. We'll shut you up. We don't want to hear that. That's where we are today. And somebody says, well, all right, Pastor, and I got a question. I know you do. I know people got a lot of questions. What about rape? Well, just listen to these two testimonies. I got to move fast. I mean, this isn't a class. This is a message this morning. But when the 2014 Miss Pennsylvania, Valerie Gatto, I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right, was in third grade, she found out the difficult truth that she had been conceived when her mother was raped at knife point. Gatto's mother was only 19 year old, years old when the attack occurred, and she went on to become Miss Pennsylvania. Um, former Fox and Friends weekend co-anchor Kelly Wright wrote about his mother's decision to give birth to him despite having conceived him in rape. In his book, America's Hope in Troubled Times, Wright describes how his mother was raped when she was 16 years old and how he was the result of that rape. Look at verse 15 of Psalm 139. My frame was not hidden from you. Look at that. When I was made in secret. What's that? That's got to be in the mother's womb. God's making the baby in secret. That's in the belly. Doesn't that change some of your minds to know that in secret, God's making the baby and we want to go in and stop it. Skillfully, the Bible says here skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, in the belly, skillfully. God with skill creates human life. Verse 16, this is clear, folks. Verse 16, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. Just let God's word speak right there. Wow. And then look at the rest of verse 16. And in your book, they all were written. The days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. That's amazing. When God made you in your mama in the darkness of the belly, God wrote out your days for you. That is amazing. That's God's plan, which leads me to say, um, I got to move on. We got to go on to the third truth. The third truth is every person is given protection by God. Look at Genesis chapter nine, verse six with me real quick. Okay. Y'all hanging in there. Feels colder this week than last week, doesn't it? Maybe it's because the wind's blowing. Genesis chapter 9. And let's see, where are we at here? I'm so sorry. I have to lick my fingers because it's so dry out here. Don't y'all, please don't gross out on me. Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Check this out. This is what the Bible says. This is what God says. Whosoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God he made man. You know what that means? Someone kills a man, he should be killed by man. That's God's protection of human life. That's God's protection of human life. God creates and protects human life. Then if you go over to Romans chapter uh, 13, you see that God put the government in place um, to enforce the law and to punish evildoers. And that's how God put the God put our lives because our lives are of value. And he's given us that right as we live on this earth. And that's even for the lost and the saved people. God's common grace. He causes the sun to shine on the good and the evil. He causes the rains to come for the good and the evil. He gives us the government and the law to protect us for the good and the evil. That's God's common grace. But look, what else does the Bible say? You know what? Exodus chapter 20, verse 13 in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. That one's so clear. But here's another one for you. How about Proverbs chapter 6? Proverbs chapter 6. Now, I told y'all, don't get mad at me. You got to look in God's word and get mad at him because he wrote this, not me. Okay? I Hey, look. 
if you go to a restaurant and the waiter or the waitress brings you some food that you don't like, don't take it up. I mean, you, you got to tell the waiter or the waitress, but you're really mad at the cook, right? The waitress or the waiter just delivered it to you. Same thing with fl uh, flowers. If somebody delivers you flowers, don't blame it on or the pizza. Don't blame it on the delivery guy. Blame it on the cook or the corporation or whoever it is. So that's the same thing. The preacher's just the delivery boy. Okay, y'all listening? All right, look. Look in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. These six things, yes, seven are an abomination to him. So here's six things that God hates. Seven things that just, these are seven things that God hates. And I'll just give you the first three. A proud look, God hates pride. A lying tongue, hands that shed. Innocent blood. Man. Man. Hands that shed innocent blood. So this shows the value of human life and the protection of human life. And over in Proverbs chapter 31, I don't want to forget this when y'all writing these down because I'm trying to move kind of fast. Proverbs 31, 8 and 9. Check it out. The Bible says, open your mouth for the speechless. In the cause of all who are appointed to die, open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead their cause, uh, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. We're to stand up for the rights of the unborn. The Bible tells us to. But then, fourthly, not only is every person created in the uh, image and likeness of God, only is every person created wonderfully by God, not only is every person given protection by God, but fourthly, every person has a life that is known and planned by God. Now, we've already seen it in Psalm 139, verse 6, didn't we? Where the Bible says, all the days fashioned for me, they were written in your book. God's got a plan for our lives. But check this out. I know y'all love this one. I love this. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Check it out. I love it. I love it. I love it. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. God tells Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Oh, my goodness. Y'all hear me? Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Now, I understand you're not Jeremiah and I'm not Jeremiah. And God didn't ordain me a prophet to the nations like he did Jeremiah in Jeremiah's day. But the application is there. If God Jeremiah in the womb, then he knew you and me before he formed us. And he has a plan for our lives, though it may not be Jeremiah's plan. He's got a plan for our lives. And so the point is, we need to remember this morning that God know, knew you before he even formed you in the womb. Lastly, I want to say, I just want to give you a few other scriptures and a few other applications. And I'll, I'll be done. God alone is the author of life, and he alone numbers our days from the moment of conception until natural death. Job chapter 14, 5 through 7, Psalm 39, 4. God begins life. He's the only one who has a right. Secondly, the Bible commands us to honor our parents and the aged. Exodus 20, 12, Leviticus 19. Six to. That tells us that um, we we need to avoid euthanasia. We don't just because of and, you know, abortions and euthanasia are are done on the altar of convenience. You know that there someone becomes an inconvenience. We don't we don't care. We care about us. That's the bottom line of all of this. If you look at it. Thirdly, both mother and baby have a right to life. That's important that we know that today. That's been clear as we've seen in the Bible. Um, everybody talks about the rights of the mom. But what about the rights of the baby? Oh. Somebody says, well, what if the mother's life is in danger? Well, the United States Council of Catholic Bishops had some little bit of guidance in this matter. And they said, very rarely continuing a pregnancy may put the mother's life at risk. In certain cases, such as aggressive uterine cancer or an ectopic pregnancy, it is morally licit to remove the threat 
to the mother's life by removing the cancerous uterus or by removing part or all of the fallopian tube where the child impl is implanted, even though it is foreseeable that the child will die as an indirect and unintended effect of such surgery. Abortion, a direct and intentional attack against the child's life is never morally licit. The unborn child and his mother have equal human dignity and possess the same right to life. So you might ask this morning, what can I do? Well, if you've been an advocate of abortion or euthanasia, you can repent right now. And if you're not saved, the Bible says repent, change your mind and turn to Jesus and be saved. Um, if you or someone you know is facing an unplanned pregnancy, you should know that pregnancy resource centers are devoted to offering women alternatives to abortion helping them make informed choices and providing a range of services to support them throughout their pregnancy and beyond. It has been on my wife's heart for many years now to start a pregnancy, a crisis pregnancy center here in Thomasville. There's not one. And that, that dream is starting hopefully to become a reality. Please be praying about that. That's really something serious that we think this is we're right at the right time where God wants us to do this. Once referred to a crisis pregnancy center, they are nonprofit organizations devoted to offering women alternatives to abortion, helping them make informed choices and providing a range of services to support them throughout their pregnancy and beyond. Listen to this blog by Desiring God. I'm not sure who the author was. He said, scientifically, your life as a human being began at conception. You are today the same human being that you were when you were six years old. That's pretty good, isn't it? Although you may look very different today. You are the same human being today that you were at six months in your mother's womb. You are the same human being today that you were at six days as an embryo. You've matured in size, awareness, independence, and other ways. But you started out human and you will end human. That's why as someone who believes in equal rights, I'm obligated to defend the rights of those who are oppressed. As we just read in Proverbs 31. And that's what he said. Um, you can get involved with March for Life next week, March 29th. Uh, look that up. Maybe Google will let you look that up. I don't know. Uh, I'm almost finished. I promise I'm in my conclusion. I just want to make sure I end this right. Listen to these words by a recent author unknown. We live in a nation that's hurting, broken by our own doing. Violence, selfishness, division, abortion. Even in a pandemic, we are desperate for things that give life. Yet we forget who authors it. From Old Testament to New Testament, the Bible points to clear truth that into us. The womb and sent Jesus to rescue us from sin and be the way to everlasting life. Now hang in there, okay? Listen to this. This comes from a pro-choice website based in North Carolina. I'm not going to read it all. Just a little bit. I get too mad if I read it all. <laughs> Picture this certain scenario, they say, which is all too common. You're scared that you might be pregnant. You see an ad for a free pregnancy test and counseling. You call the number and make an appointment. You're told that birth control is the same as abortion and that if you have an abortion, you will probably get breast cancer. You're vulnerable, scared, and confused. You've walked into a fake clinic, a so-called crisis pregnancy center, and you have been lied to and manipulated. You deserve the truth comprehensive, unbiased, factual, and medically accurate information about all options available to you. Forget this book. What they say. These fake clinics are growing, are a growing threat to women's health. They often lie to patients about abortion and birth control. They'll do anything to scare people away from choosing legal abortion. These fake clinics are biased, anti-choice, anti-LGBTQ organizations. They may, may look like comprehensive health clinics and their staff may wear scrubs 
but many are generally unregulated and unlicensed and may not have any licensed medical staff as part of their organization. They use deceptive tactics to mislead North Carolinians about pregnancy-related information. Many try to manipulate and frighten the people who walk in looking for assistance. All I got to say is I, that is not true. They're the liars. And all I got to say is if, if, you're, uh, if you're leading people for abortion and you're leading people away from that, away from the Bible and away from Jesus, you're the one whose life is eternity is in danger if you don't turn to Jesus. So that's, they're the liars. They're the harassers. They're anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-truth. And today, if you stand for truth, you're a hater. And, they, and you know where we are today? We're in, a, we're in an age of manipulation. Come on now. How many of y'all have, have ever been manipulated and controlled? You know what a manipulator and a controller does, don't you? Some of you girls been manipulated and controlled by a guy. Y'all know what a manipulator and a controller does? This is the right. To listen to me and do what I say. Don't argue with me. And if you argue with them, they, oh, you just hate me. You just don't like me. Oh, you just don't care about me. You don't care about what I think. That's manipulation and control. Well, you're just, and that's what we're being, that's what's being done to us today. If we stand for truth, if we stand for Jesus, if we stand for the Bible, you're anti-LGBTQ. You're a hater. You're a folk, whatever. You hate, and there's how many, how many names, how many words are now phobic? I don't even know how many they are, you know? And and it's manipulation and it's control. No, no, no. And, and we, we try to stand for the Bible. We stand, try to stand for truth. We try to give people the gospel. We try to stand for what the word of God says. Oh, you're a hater. You're a something phobic. And we can't talk. If you don't agree with somebody, they try to control you and manipulate you. Well, I'd like you to listen to a story and I'm closing. Amanda's story. At the age of 18, I came to the CPC Women's Health Resource, scared and pregnant. I considered all three options of adoption, abortion, and parenting. After talking to the counselors, I decided to carry my baby and parent with my boyfriend. My relationship with the baby's father failed, though, and it left me heartbroken and feeling like a failure. I came back to the CPC and received support, counsel, and prayer that God would lead me. I later began a new relationship with a man who accepted me just as I was, and he loved my boys as their own father. We decided to get married, and together we made a commitment to abstain from sex until our marriage. In honor to God, who was a big part of our lives, the Crisis Pregnancy Center helped make our relationship a reality because they helped me get back into the Word. Randy and I are now happily married, and we have a daughter. We have a wonderful family and God is the head of our household. I now travel to churches and organizations speaking on behalf of the Crisis Pregnancy Center and sharing my story of hope. Okay, thank y'all so much for listening, folks. Jesus said it. The majority is always going on the wide road that leads, leads to destruction. There's only one road that leads to life and it's narrow and it's hard and it's only through the way of Jesus. And if you're on a road with the majority, chances are you're on the wrong road because it's usually the minority that that follows Jesus and stands in the truth. So be careful. And I want to say this, abortion is a forgivable sin. Somebody says, I've already done that. But you know what? The blood of Jesus can forgive any sin that you've ever committed. Any sin can be forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are willing to understand that it's not just that sin, but it's just that you have a sin nature and we sin against God by nature. And if you would see your sin and realize that God's judgment is coming and you can escape God's judgment because he provided a way through his son, Jesus Christ, who hung up on a cross and bled and died for sinners like you and me. And if you be willing to turn away from your sin and cry out to Jesus and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he will save you and give you a new heart and give you a new life and life forever. That's truth. I know it's truth from the word of God. Let's pray together. 
Lord God, thank you for your word. It is truth, and there's no other truth we have but your word. God, thank you for speaking today. God, I pray that you'd save many who are listening right now. God, I pray that you would change the minds of many who are listening right now. God, I pray that you would call some to just resurrender their lives to you who are really already saved. Lord, help us to stand up for the rights of the poor and the needy and those who can't speak for themselves. Help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Give us some comments. Let us know how we can help you. Hey, hit me up. I'll be glad to uh, help you in any way that I can. Thank you all for watching. We love each and every one of you. Have a great rest.